this is a short um, recording that I've made um, regarding copying consent attribute data to the consent area in Razor's Edge 7 um, with the release of patch 10 of 796. My name is Tim Bowden. I'm Customer Success Manager at Blackboard Europe. Um, the agenda, what we're going to look at in this short video is, first of all, the setup in the system in your uh, consent business rules and co other configuration preparation options that you would need to do before um, you undertake this process to import from the stored attribute data. Just a quick review of um, our recommendations, our previous recommendations of storing consent um, in the attribute area and what that would look like. Then um, the query that you um, can use to go and pull out that um, attribute consent data and export it out of the system. Then uh, looking at preparation of that data in Excel um, prior to then going through the import process itself. And finally, just a little review of what that data looks like um, both in the database and also in the web view um, NXT for those customers um, that are on NXT now. So this hopefully will be familiar to everybody. As I said, um, it's patch 10 um, of 796 that has now opened up the ability to query and to import on consent. Um, and ahead of doing that, what we strongly recommend is that you um, get all your business rules in place where you set up your relevant um, channels and categories. Um, I've, for this demo, I've kept it relatively straight forward, and I'm just looking at um, three email categories that we have um, of appeals, events, and newsletters, but appreciate that um, some of you may have far more numerous um, pieces of data that you need to bring across, but we're just sticking with the, these three for, for this particular demo. Also making sure that you have against each of those the um, relevant rules around opt-ins and opt-outs um, against each channel and category. Um, removing and adding solicit codes as appropriate. The other thing um, that I strongly recommend if you haven't got this in place already is around um, the consent source um, table, making sure what you have currently sitting um, in your attribute comments um, as it's the source of um, the consent that you have that entered into the table. Although you can switch it on as you import to add to table entries, but uh, if you haven't got that switched on, it could lead to exceptions as you try to import into the system. So in this case, um, I've added in online and phone, um, as you'll see in a second as we look at the attributes, those are data categories um, that I've been recording. So here on um, my record at the bottom here, we have um, the consent uh, attributes that uh, have email for appeals, events, and newsletter with our opt-ins and opt-outs. Um, also, a uh, recommendation was for no responses. I haven't done any configuration in that example before, but if you have been recording that, obviously um, you can add the, the rules around that as well as you're doing your business rules. And as you can see in the comments, um, all of these um, have a, uh, a source of phone that has been added into the comments area. When um, I'm ready, I created the query that is looking at, um, first of all, filtering on any records that have um, one of those three attributes loaded. Um, and I've used the not blank. Um, I, I've used it on the, the description field. I could just as easily have used it on the um, uh, import ID for the attribute as well. Um, but in this case, I have been looking at not blanks for email appeals, events, and newsletter. In terms of output, I have then, and again, I'll just maximize this up to make it a little bit uh, larger. Um, have um, outputted for those uh, the 
import ID of the record. Uh, you could use constituent ID if you prefer. And just for a visual, a visual I wouldn't, I'm not going to use this as part of the import, but the first name and the surname um, of the relevant record, or I could have just used the name field. And then I put in the attribute descriptions, date, and comments. So we've got three of those. So I've brought those out for each three. Um, also, for making mapping possibly a little bit easier, it is possible to right-click um, over the entries in the output. And then you can choose column heading. Um, and that allows you to just go and rename it rather than have this rather long attribute description in there. I've just changed it, for example, in that example where email appeals response, and that just makes it much easier, as you'll see later, when I come to do um, my mapping in import. Then I hit the, the export button. Um, I'm choosing Excel as my format, um, name my file, um, and the path and where I want to save that file to, and then run the export um, with the export now option. And um, I've now got those uh, two rows of data that have been exported out. The next stage is then preparing that and uh, supplementing that data that's been exported out with the other relevant things that I'm going to need on the import. So this is what the data looks like when I um, first uh, open it up, uh, maybe resize the columns to make it a little easier to see what's going on. But you can see those column headings coming through. So again, it makes it a little easier for, for me to see what's going on and what I'm looking at, even easier when we come to import. But I am missing two key things. and. Um, I definitely need to have my channel and I need to have my category inserted for each of these um, three attributes that I've pushed out. So you can see I've inserted uh, the, the appropriate columns um, and put my data in. If I'm um, wanting to also record privacy policy info or the statement, I can also include columns for this. But it, uh, to keep this nice and simple, I've cut down slightly on the data that I want to bring in and supplement and add. And again, you can see there's the import ID sitting at the beginning. And just for my own reference, uh, we've got the name information sitting in there. When I've completed that process, um, I save the file. I use Save As to save the file as a CSV, which is what um, standard import will look for. And then I'm ready to do my importing of that consent data back into the database. So into import, you'll see there's a new um, import type called constituent consent. And uh, I select on that. And then I go and locate my file. I'm doing uh, import of new records. I could do validation first. I'm selecting to use the import ID and leave it on the default of delimited. Um, in terms of my mapping, I know that's a, a little bit small to read, but I am just mapping to the uh, import ID. And I'm mapping against the first um, attribute only. You, I can only bring in um, one channel and category at a time. So you could choose to do a separate um, export and import of each if that's easier. But I've just brought it all out, and I'm ignoring the secondary and the third attribute for the time being, just mapping on the import ID, and then choosing, as you can see, if I maximize this up a little bit, um, underneath that there is, and it makes it much easier with the renaming of the columns, my channel, category, uh, response, and consent date, and source. And if I've obviously had taken other things like privacy policy, and statement, um, those could be in there as well. Um, then once I've saved this, uh, to save time rather than having to reinvent the wheel, um, I can then um, open it up again and do a save as to then save um, for the secondary channel and category. Um, you can see I've now ignored the first and the third on that. And I repeat that process for the third and however many um, that you're taking out. What I've also used was the Remove um, Option button in the middle to go and take out uh, the, the first um, mapping I'd done against the first attribute. And uh, as I said, just mapped against the second. 
And yeah, saving as allows me then to go and save these three different imports for the first, the second, and my third. And you can keep repeating um, depending on how many um, you have extracted out. Then I carry out um, each of those three imports. And um, once the data um, has been completely imported in, what you should see then sitting against the appropriate record is um, there, that attribute data is now transferred in with my channels, my categories, and my responses, that source that we were seeing, the consent date, and it automatically, I've done the import, so it's put my username um, against that as well. Consent statement um, and the privacy policy in this particular case, we didn't incorporate and choose as part of that. Also, by the, uh, the business rules that I had in place, you can, you'll see here that it goes ahead and um, now applies and adds and puts in the appropriate um, solicit codes. So two, no emails against appeals and newsletter and an accept um, against events. As I mentioned, if any of you have NXT, um, you'll see it's also replicating that um, on, in the web view of NXT, where I can see now my um, solicit code referred to as communication preferences coming across with what we were just seeing in that previous screen, and there's the consent data sitting there as well. I hope this has been useful. Thank you very much for listening.